One day, a boy continues to find himself dying again and again, but after so many countless deaths, he is able to find himself waking up in a peculiar place. As he scans the area, he sees nothing but emptiness. He even thought that maybe he was now finally in heaven. However, as he checks his status bar, he is in deep shock as he discovers that he is reincarnated into another world, not as a human but as an arc demon. He is now a demon lord, and as a demon lord he is obligated to guard the dungeon he is assigned to, since if the dungeon dies, the demon lord will die too, and that system works vice versa. To be able to guard his life in the dungeon, he must improve his skills and get stronger. Based on his discovery, as he checks on the status bar, almost all items and food are purchasable with dungeon points. However, the problem is, how will he possibly acquire all those dungeon points? Well, it turns out that he can do so when there are monsters besides the ones summoned by the dungeon master inside the dungeon. The amount of acquired DP depends on the monster's strength. Second, when the dungeon master kills intruders inside the dungeons, the amount of acquired DP depends on the intruder's strength. Third, when absorbing monsters' corpses or anything else that can be seen as food inside the dungeon, the amount of acquired DP depends on the objects. And lastly, in self-generation, the amount of acquired DP depends on the dungeon size. But since none of these things are about to happen anytime soon, he decided to just go outside for now. But it seems like his carefree exploration came to a stop when a giant, really strong dragon came out of nowhere. As their eyes met, the nervousness in the man's body, aka Yuki, is very apparent. Yuki tries to tell the dragon to talk the matter out peacefully. However, it seems like the dragon has already decided that no one will escape its wrath once someone breaches its territory. Yuki is in deep shock when he finds out that the dragon can speak. As he checks on its status panel, he wishes that the dragon is a mere low level like he is. But his life comes crashing down as he finds out the dragon is actually supreme and ancient one. His current level of 1 is no match to the dragon's level of 987. Yuki starts to panic as the dragon positions itself to aim. But then, Yuki smelled something that would definitely save his life. He stops the dragon from bursting out its flame and tells it that they should just make a deal. Yuki honestly states that he indeed has no chance of beating the dragon with his current power. However, that doesn't mean that he will accept his fate just like that. For that, he chooses to find another way to tame the dragon. And surprisingly, it's by offering the dragon some chocolate bars. It turns out that the dragon actually loves sweets and Yuki is able to find out about it after smelling the honey scent from the dragon's mouth from miles away. The dragon tries to hide the fact, but after taking a bite, everything changes. The dragon can't seem to describe the delicious mellow sweetness of the bar, which it describes to be way better than honey. Seeing this, Yugi then states that if the dragon promises not to kill him and leave the cave where he lives alone, the dragon will get the privilege of being able to eat chocolate bars whenever it wants. However, Yugi did make it clear that he couldn't produce that many that could satisfy the dragon's giant body. As a result, the dragon transforms itself into a human form. Yuki is in shock as he sees a cute naked girl standing in front of him. The dragon then explains that in her human form, Yuki is able to produce as many chocolates as can satisfy her. He then took her to the dungeon where they fully talk about the deal. There they officially introduce themselves to one another. The dragon's name is Lefisios, in short, Leffy. Out of nowhere, Leffy then states that compared to the other dungeons she was able to crush, Yuki's is the most comfortable. Besides, it's just perfect because she's leaving to change her current place which is pretty uncomfortable. That means she decided to stay at Yuki's dungeon for good. Yuki tried to tell her that she shouldn't be hasty with her decision and think about it a little more. However, it seems like she's really determined to stay no matter what. As a result, Yuki has no choice but to agree with her request. The next day, as Luffy is sound asleep, Yuki tries to improve his dungeon for the first time. He starts off by assigning areas inside the dungeon. As he sets the cave as the dungeon area, Yuki is able to feel that the atmosphere inside the place has changed as well. He now aims to expand the dungeon more, only to find out that he doesn't have sufficient DP to do it. However, thanks to Laffy, whom the dungeon sees as a trespasser, Yuki is able to increase his DP income continuously. That said, for him to be able to expand the dungeon more, he'll just have to wait patiently till the DP score comes back up. In the meantime, he will now try to summon monsters, but he'll first try with the cheapest ones. Yuki then clicks by, and just like that, a slime appears right in front of him. And it's not just any slime, but a very cute one. Yuki finds the monster unexpectedly cute and even names it Shi. However, as he checks on the monster's status panel, his pride shatters to pieces as he finds out that the small slime has a higher luck stat than he does. While he's having a mini breakdown, a grrr is heard echoing. As he turns his head, Yuki finds a three-headed creature called Cerberus, who's at level 32. As Yuki locks his eyes on the said trespassers, Jiggly Shi stops him from approaching the monster any closer. She then rushes towards the three-headed monster in hopes of defeating it once and for all. Yuki supports his so-called ally Pokemon by cheering. He shouts at Shi, stating that it's right, it doesn't matter if its opponent is higher level at all. However, his excitement vanishes as Shi gets defeated in one blow. Yuki then rushes towards his precious slime and kicks the hell out of the Cerberus. Then a splat of blood comes splashing everywhere. 
It turns out that Yuki's kick was so powerful, it literally smashed Cerberus' heads. Even Yuki is shocked by his abilities. With just that one kick, he is able to level up his skills from 1 to an instant 12. He is able to get a new skill, which is martial arts. However, it seems like his luck stats didn't grow at all. But well, even if his stats are indeed considered high, he still doesn't think he could hold a candle against that super monster, aka Leffy. After he snaps out his thoughts, he then rushes to check if she is alright. And it seems like she is all good, maybe because of the regeneration skill he has. Yuki then starts to blame himself for letting his pet she fight a monster. That's why, starting at that time, it'll just be him that has to fight. And for that very reason, Yuki then asks Leffy to teach him some magic. Yuki continues to ask Leffy to teach him magic. He reasons out that he has a pretty high magic stat, so he thinks he can use some. But it turns out that it wasn't that easy at all. Luffy then decided to accept Yuki's request. But before anything else, of course, Luffy asks for more chocolates. Yuki tries to warn her that if she keeps on asking for more chocolates, she'll end up getting a cavity. Luffy then explains that there's no way an ancient dragon like she could ever get such a bad status. Even Yuki is in deep shock when he learns that cavities are a bad status in the said world. Instead of giving Luffy some chocolates, Yuki ended up giving her a pack of cookies. Although at first, Luffy is a bit hesitant to take a bite at the dark clay looking thing. But once she tastes it, she immediately falls in love with the cookie sweet and crunchy crumbles. Due to her excitement and happiness, Luffy can't even hide the fact that she's glad she moved into Yuki's dungeon. Now that Luffy's belly is already satisfied, the magic lessons begin. At the start of the lesson, Luffy declares that she will make Yuki the most powerful mage in the world. With that said, she then asks for Yuki's hand to make him feel like a real member of this world. The powerful energy that is rushing through Yuki's body and the surroundings is so apparent that even Yuki himself can say that it is far different from the mana that he feels in the air of the dungeon. Luffy felt more like a muddy stream, so heavy and powerful. Thankfully, Yuki's head didn't burst from the powerful mana since it turns out that not all humans are able to withstand Luffy's powerful magic. That said, Luffy then asks Yuki to do the same as she did earlier on his own. He keeps his focus as much as possible and only looks at one goal. Yuki follows all of Luffy's instructions. Luffy asks him to try to imagine what she is going to say in as much detail as he can, and after that, repeat all the words that she is going to chant. Yuki then does all that Luffy told him to do. He imagines a faraway land and a plane that stretches it over. He also imagines a single flower on that plane. Now, Luffy wants him to imagine that he plucks that flower and puts it inside his hands. Then, as Yuki opens his palm and chants a spell, he's in so much amazement when he sees a beautiful flower in his hands. However, his amazement suddenly becomes gloomy when he realizes that he didn't ask Luffy to teach him magic just to create a flower. Technically, Yuki wants something more. With that said, Luffy then tells him to imagine another thing. This time, a flame. Then after some concentration, Yuki is able to create a fire on his fingertips. Even Luffy is amazed at Yuki's abilities, stating that perhaps being a high demon played a big part in it. On the other hand, Yuki seems so excited about his new skills that it ends up getting out of control. Thankfully, Luffy is right there. If not, his whole place would crumble to ashes. Luffy guides him by saying that if he wants to stop the magic, he should first stop the circulation inside his body. Yuki then reverses the flow back, and just like that, he is able to stop the fire from spreading. Luffy is then left in amazement. She also reminded Yuki that he should pay attention to adjusting his power since being good at magic means that he needs to be very efficient with his mana when he uses magic arts. That said, for now, Luffy decided to stop the first lesson of teaching Yuki the basics. But before they conclude the day, she makes sure that Yuki won't forget that the most important thing is the image inside his head. Chanting is only there to help him imagine things. Yuki then got curious if he could create something else other than flowers and fire with his mana. Luffy then answers that it really depends on his potential since basically, magic is divided into earth, fire, water, and wind. But there are also others like time, light, and darkness. In Yuki's case, he at least has an affinity with earth and fire magic, but he still doesn't know about the rest if he doesn't try. Luffy also ensures him that he shouldn't worry about trying things out since she will be right at his side to watch over him. Yuki then tries to use his magic to use it for his daily needs, like water for a bath and wind for drying. However, the rest he is still not sure if he has an affinity for them or not. But since for now, he can only manipulate much of his water skills, he will just take a bath for the time being. Seeing him taking a bath made Luffy curious. That's why she ended up taking a bath as well. Meanwhile, outside the dungeon, a group of men are seen chasing a little girl into the haunted forest. But it seems like they are so scared of Luffy that they end up letting the little girl run for her life. Now it will only be a matter of time before we know where the little girl ends up. Going back to the dungeon after taking a bath, Yuki leaves the house to Luffy while he roams around the forest. As he steps outside, Yuki will now start with his agenda to rake in DP. Since there is no one who has visited the dungeon all this time and the fact that the area around the dungeon is Luffy's turf, Yuki doesn't see a lot of animals and monsters. That's why it would be such a problem if he couldn't find a new way to collect DP on his own. That said, he's planning to fill the map and expand his dungeon outwards. While on his work, 
Yugi is able to start seeing strong monsters here and there. Now that his dungeon expansion was a success, Yugi decided to go back home and cook some food. However, as he gets home and opens the freezer, he's in deep shock when the one week worth of meat is all gone, and there's no one who can possibly finish it other than Luffy. Luffy tries to reason out, but it seems like Yuki is not satisfied with her excuses. They ended up getting into a heated argument. Still, in the end, when Yuki tells her that he will never create any snacks again, Luffy immediately bows her head and says sorry, and promises that she will never do such foolish acts again. Since they technically don't have any food, Grumpy and Yuki decided they should just fast for the day. Then, as compensation, Luffy rushes outside and tells Yuki that she'll do something about it. After 30 minutes, Yuki is in deep shock when he sees a lump of monsters in front of him, with blood spilling everywhere. Instead of being thankful and happy, Yuki ended up getting more stressed, but then he remembers that corpses can also be converted to TP, which will be something useful considering Yuki is still expanding his dungeon. The next day, Yuki went on another working day, killing as many monsters as he could. Considering he wasn't able to use fire magic since day one of training, Yuki decided to just focus on training his water and earth magic in the meantime. Now that he had finished mapping every corner of the area, and the DP revenue rate now is three times greater compared to when it was just Luffy, Yuki thought that it was now all good enough. Then, he sees something lying around the corner. He thought it was a monster's corpse, but it ended up being the little girl's body. Yuki rushes towards her and immediately performs some first aid by pouring some high-grade potion on her wounds. Seeing that the girl is alright, Yuki thinks he can't possibly just leave her alone in the wild. That said, Yuki ended up bringing the little girl back to the house. It seems like the girl is a vampire based on Luffy and Yuki's observations, and she's not just any ordinary vampire, but a rare one in that sense. In the last several years, pretty looking species like vampires and succubus are on the verge of extinction, thanks to humans overhunting them and making them slaves. Other than vampires, there are also species like the children of the forest, which should have been in a non-aggression alliance with the humans and has also been mercilessly attacked since the humans got into a hostile relationship with demon folk. During this conversation, the little girl then wakes up only to find herself in such an unknown place. Yuki then tries to calm her down by assuring her that she doesn't have to be so frightened since he won't do anything bad to her. The little girl seems to have no plans of trusting Yuki at all, but after she appears and plays with her, somehow she starts to let her guard down a little bit. At this time, Yuki then finds the time to introduce himself and Leffy. Then the girl, whose name is Iruna, also introduced herself with a smile. Yuki then asks her what she was doing so deep in the forest. Iruna then explains that she was being chased by humans, as seen earlier. Yuki starts to feel sad for Iruna. He then went on to ask her if she knew where her home was. Hearing the word home makes Iruna burst into crying. She stated that her home was already gone. All of her family members are now dead, and she doesn't have any place to call home. Yuki tries to comfort her, but it seems like she's gone through so much, considering the area where they are right now is far from human villages, even more so for a child's leg. That means Iduna must have gone through a pretty cruel experience for her to run away. Yuki then assures her that there are no scary humans anywhere and that she can stay as long as she wishes. Iduna then states that she should be dead as well, like her mother and father, considering humans have said to her that she doesn't deserve to live at all. Hearing such a statement made Yuki furious. That said, Yuki tries to tell Iduna that no matter what people say, she deserves to live well and free. In the midst of their conversation, Iduna's belly rumbles in hunger. That's why Yuki offers to cook her some food. However, it seems like what she wants is Yuki's blood. Without any hesitation, Yuki immediately tells her that she can have as much as she wants. On the other hand, Luffy asks him if he is sure about this decision. And it seems like he is, considering he thought that there's nothing wrong about it as he would turn into a vampire or what. It seems like Luffy is worried that he will get hard when a little girl like Iduna comes biting his neck. And it turns out he does. With that said, he ended up getting so weak at the end of the drinking session. Yuki then asks Luffy to take Iduna to the bath. And in exchange, he'll give her two bags of cookies. With that said, another new resident has come to Yuki's humble dungeon. For sure, the house will get more and more bustling from now on. With Iduna's arrival, it seems like Yuki's life in the dungeon has become easier than it was before. Maybe because of her cuteness overload. While Yuki is at his luck game, choosing an item from his menu panel, he keeps on getting trashy items one after another. Iduna, on the other hand, grew curious at what Yuki was doing. It seemed like she could see the menu panel right in front of Yuki, not like Luffy, who didn't. As he pushes one of the buttons, a white wolf-like creature is summoned. Luffy then tells them that the high-level creature is just an infant, and in the coming days or years, it will become stronger. Meanwhile, Yuki seems to be really curious as to why Luffy can't see his status in menu panel while Iduna can. Luffy then explains that it's because of what they call a marriage ritual. It seems like Yuki sees Iduna as family, while he sees Luffy as an intruder. That's why Iduna has some more privilege over Yuki's abilities. It turns out that blood is one of the most important factors that make our bodies work. So to a vampire, rather than a meal, the act of letting another person's blood inside themselves is closer to sexual intercourse. That's why Iduna is technically now Yuki's family after the said blood meal. Since the act of sucking another person's blood is equal to a marriage ritual to vampires, this revelation made Yuki shocked. 
I mean, it's already quite apparent just by the look on his face. He comes running out of the house, declaring to Luffy that she won't have snacks for three days as a result of not informing him from the start. This made Luffy upset, considering it was so unfair and too unjust. But Yugi doesn't give a damn about anything she says, considering he is in a much bigger problem. As he got outside, Yugi then decided that for the time being, he would just pretend that no such thing had happened and let it go like thin air. Instead of stressing himself out, he will now just focus on his main dish for the day, which is the pistol he is able to get from the last episode. Boom bang boom bang! The pistol sounds echo through the forest. It seems like the revolver evens out all of his loss in the gacha. Furthermore, he is able to store several bullets with varied amounts of mana inside it. He even checks with his mana eyes and it seems like he didn't see any leak. This means that it would be hard for his opponents to sense it, which makes the revolver a convenient tool. After his mini training with the new weapon, the creature that Iduna is able to summon comes outside. There, Yuki asks it to show some of the skills he has, and he doesn't want to see just any skills, he wants unique ones. Literally, the creature which they named Rear has some good and useful skills. In a split second, Rear is nowhere to be found thanks to its god speed. Other than that, Rear also has an ever-changing chain skill which summons chains and controls them freely. He also has body transformation which allows him to change body size from time to time. All these unique skills made Yuki so excited and amazed at the same time. As a result, they ended up being best friends. He even tells Rear that they can stay if he wants to. From now on, the dungeon is Rear's home too. Yuki also wants to start trying out new skills. This time, he wants to learn how to fly. And guess what? He literally sucks at it. He's so devastated at the fact that he even spent a ton of money buying a flight skill, but he still ended up as a failure. That's why to make things worth it, Yuki ultimately asks for Luffy's help. At first, Luffy is so hesitant, but when Yuki gives her a box of donuts, she immediately gives in. As they go outside, Luffy complained about how the sun was so bright. Yuki then explains that considering how many days she has stayed inside the house, obviously the sun would be really bright. Yuki then asks her if she still has plans of protecting her territory, but it seems like she doesn't anymore. When Yuki shows off his wings, Luffy's eyes shine in amazement. Luffy starts complimenting Yuki's magnificent wings, but when Yuki told her her wings are more beautiful, she ended up getting flustered. After the brief compliments, they immediately proceed to the task at hand. Luffy reminds Yuki that he should make use of his mana eyes and pay attention. Luffy then shows off her imitation wings, which is the one she will use to teach Yuki some flight tips. And just like that, Luffy flies off to show Yuki how good she is in her skills. Luffy then tells him that for him to fly, he should start focusing on gathering all of his mana in his wings. After a few seconds for the first time, Yuki finally got his wings to beat. As long as he maintains it, he'll be able to fly as much as he wants. As he spreads his wings and flopped it again and again, finally, Yuki is now able to see the horizon from above. He is so amazed by the beautiful view of the sky as well as Luffy's beautiful face. For a split second, Yuki froze, but he went back to reality when Luffy snapped him out of it. The two then started to fly here and there, trying to catch up with each other. Meanwhile, at Alfiro, a border town, a guild is located. Inside the guild office, a number of hunters are given an urgent quest issued directly from the guild's higher ups. Guilds also have rankings inside their organization, with Orichalcum Adamantite being the highest, followed by Mithril, Gold, Silver, Iron, and Bronze. Since the Adamantite class is super busy, the guild has decided to assign the task to the Mithril adventurers. The adventurers then have a meeting with themselves after hearing their urgent news. They start talking about if they will accept the quest or not. They start asking what each other thinks, but in the end, they still don't have any choice but to accept it anyways. Since it is quite known that adventurers who refuse a direct quest from the guild usually see the reputation suffer for it, they have also started talking about rumors that the sightings of that monster that rarely shows itself kept popping up more frequently. Now it's their job to investigate why the monsters in the haunted forest are acting strangely. The next day, the quest began. The adventurers keep running as monsters start popping up one after another. As they make a run for it, a horned tiger shows up. Horned tigers are known to be monsters that can only be encountered by adventurers in the deeper part of the forest, but the fact that the monster is seen at the entrance makes them question what the heck is really happening to the forest. But before they even meet their death, Rear shows up and starts killing the said monster. The adventurers thought that Rear would come after them next, but they were in deep shock when Rear just walked away as if nothing had happened. Now that they are saved, they immediately run for their lives, planning to leave the forest as soon as possible. While they are at it, one of the adventurers noticed that Rear has a collar around his neck, which means there could be someone who tamed such a disaster level monster. The next day, Rear and Yuki are seen having fun again. Today their agenda is to go hunting. They move farther away from the forest where many monsters are seen. Once they lock their eyes on one of the horned tigers, Yuki and Rear immediately work together to kill it off. Now that Yuki has wings, hunting has never been easier. On the other hand, Yuki has also noticed that most of his weapons keep on breaking again and again. That's why he decided to make a stronger weapon the moment he gets back home. But for now, he'll just use some metal bar for the hunt. When they jump right into it again, Yuki is seen panicking as a horde of monsters comes chasing them. Aside from the fact that the enemies are greater in number, they all also move fast. Without any choice, Yuki ended up using his magic powers to counterattack the monsters. 
but the ants then start spraying him with an acid attack. That said, Yuki can't possibly stay like this or else his MP will get fatally low. He must think of another way as soon as possible. He then remembers that he has an item box. Item boxes are used to preserve items by freezing time and the space inside it. Yuki then gets anything from inside the box and gives it to the ants. The monsters then start eating off the preserved meat Yuki has thrown at them. With the ants being so busy, Yuki must think of another plan. But then, it strangely becomes silent. Yuki wonders if they are not coming. Could it be that they really stopped to eat the meat? With that said, just as planned, they just decided to move on. When they got home, Yuki immediately checked on the weapons he could buy. While he's at it, Iduna has grown curious if Yuki will do another magic trick. Yuki then explains that he is aiming to be a creative demon lord. If he doesn't have a weapon, then he'll just have to make one himself. But it seems like Luffy doesn't believe in Yuki's skills. Yuki on the other hand immediately shuts her off. That said, the key factors for weapon creation are the material's quality, vivid imagination, and the user's mana capacity, which Yuki thought he all possessed. And now that he already has magic enhancement skills that allow him to add magic circuits to the target, thus making it a magic tool, Yuki now strongly believes that it is the perfect harmony of magic and weapon, which is why this is truly the demon lord he is aiming to be. For starters, he first practiced by turning a lump of iron that he bought from the catalog into a knife. Yuki then poured out some mana and activated a skill. Then after a few seconds, he and Iduna are amazed when a dagger appears. Yuki immediately tries the dagger sharpness, which is the chef's kiss. Even Luffy is amazed at Yuki's creation, knowing that making such weapons are only the art of the blacksmith magic propagated by the mountain dwellers. But the fact that Yuki is able to do it on his own is just unbelievable. That said, for the next weapon, he's going to give the knife he just made a double edge, and make it bigger. Since he has a good affinity with water magic perhaps, Yuki thought that he should make it more of a streamlined or teardrop-like shape in mind. And just like that, he's able to make another weapon, this time a cute one. But it seems like Yuki is not happy about it. That's why he ended up trying to make another weapon using the material he got during hunting. As he concentrates, trying to make the edge of the sword sharp and double-edged, Luffy on the other side bugs him again and again. And as a result, he loses concentration and ends up making a giant flower instead of a sword. Yuki is so frustrated that he ends up teasing Luffy so much that they start bickering again. Iduna, on the other hand, just let the two be and decided to start playing. In the next few days, Iduna is seen having a meal with Yuki's blood. Sucking blood is scheduled to be around once a week. Normally, she just eats food like a normal human. On that same day, Iduna informs Yuki that she will just play outside. Yuki then allows her, but he also reminded that she should go home before dark. However, on that day, Iduna was never seen coming back. Just what in the world happened to the sweet little girl? After Iduna has gone missing, what will Yuki and the others do about it? With that said, Rir has also roamed the area, trying to look for Iduna himself. But it seems like the only thing he found out is the smell of humans lingering in the forest and some traces of a carriage. Then, it seems like if she was abducted, she was not taken away by some random monsters. It seems like she was taken as goods by some slave merchant. As far as features for your bus after all, Yuki thinks there's no mistaking it. Yuki then asks Luffy where's the nearest human habitation for the dungeon. Luffy then answers that it would only take about 3 hours of flying before they got there. That said, they immediately went on their way while Rear took the lead. As they reached the outside of the village, Yuki froze as he saw a flock of dragons flying in the sky. Luffy then explains that it is her underlings. She will use it to overwhelm whoever the hell took Luffy from them. That said, they immediately went on their way to take back their little sister. Meanwhile, Iduna wakes up finding herself inside a cage and looking around, sees that she's not the only one. As she looks at the men's faces, she is shocked when she remembers that these men are the same people that killed her father and mother. The men poured their anger at her, saying that they had a hard time looking for her. They also tell her that she will eventually wish she had already died as she will now be treated as a plaything for the perverted nobles. No matter how painful, Iduna tries to keep herself composed, saying it is okay since she has Yuki and Luffy. Although at first she was a little scared of Yuki, but in the end when she found out that he is kind, she started liking being by his side. On the other hand, Luffy might always be lazing off, but Iduna honestly thinks that she is reliable when the time comes. That's why she strongly believes that they will save her. Until they come, she'll try her best to do what she can do. Iduna then prays for the Earth Spirit to lend her some powers. And just like that, the Earth Spirit helps her unlock her collar and the door of the cage. She also asks the Dark Spirit to make her invisible while she escapes. Before she steps out of the door, she looks at everyone else and says to herself that she will definitely come back and save them all. Meanwhile, as Yuki and Luffy together with a flock of dragons approach the human habitat, soldiers and nobles start to panic. One of the soldiers wakes the Lord up and informs him that there are monsters closing in from above the haunted forest. The Lord immediately asks if they are wyverns. The soldiers then answer that they are not. Based on the surveillance crystals, it is seen that they are a flock of a hundred dragons, he said. This made the Lord shocked. He then orders to wake up every soldier and adventurer there is, and to also inform the citizens of the emergency and start the evacuation. Their main priority now is the safety of the people, but the Lord is left wondering why there would be a hundred adult dragons attacking them. As they already reach the city, Yuki tells Luffy to keep the dragons in order while he looks for Iduna. Yuki thought he couldn't just go rampaging the city since it might kill Iduna in the process, 
As a result, Ryer and he start to look for Iruna inside the city on their own. Meanwhile, inside the building, monster slaves are getting evacuated as well. But instead of evacuating them with care, they even got harassed in the process. Hearing the cries of the slaves, Yuki knew he had arrived at the right room as he smashed the wall down. Every man starts to wondering what the hell is happening. As Yuki steps in, his eyes roam around the area, only to find that Iruna is nowhere to be seen. As the guys start to get on his nerves, it seems like Yuki slowly realizes that he has stopped being a human after being reincarnated. He doesn't even feel for even a moment that scum like them have the right to live. With this in mind, Yuki is furious. As the bad guys start rushing towards him, aiming their swords up high, Yuki effortlessly kills them in a flick. This shocked everyone, but instead of running for their lives, the other bad guys still opted to fight with Yuki. In the end, they all ended up getting killed. Rir has also jumped in to join the fight. One of the bad guys then tells his members that Yuki has a familiar, and that's why they brought some crystals to make Rir weak. A disturbance crystal has the effect of disturbing the magic flow inside a monster to slow down its movements. The effect varies depending on the monster's power. Now, Yuki finally knows why these so-called adventurers wanted to go deeper into the forest. But as Yuki checks on their stats, it seems like it'll be hard for them to defeat him considering they are all weak. The men then couldn't possibly let Yuki step on their pride, and as a result, all ended up getting killed after Yuki used his water magic to slash all of them. Inside Yuki's head, even mosquitoes are stronger than these men. That said, Yuki then asks Rear if he can smell Iruna's scent once more. But it seems like his nose won't work properly because of all the blood. That's why Yuki thought that they should just ask the slaves then. But on second thought, that'll definitely take too much time. That's why they'll just ask the lord of the mansion directly. And let's just say the lord will not have it easy. The lord keeps begging and saying that he really doesn't know where Iduna went. He explains that the moment they realized it was when she had already vanished from the cage. Even though they locked her with advanced magical shackles and placed a guard to guard that room, the guard even ended up dying. Hearing this made Yuki smirk in amazement as he realized that Iruna was indeed a very clever kid. After all, the first time he met her was the time she was chased by these same guys. After a little while, some reinforcements come in. The lord of the mansion is so happy as he orders his men to kill Yuki once and for all. But in the end, they all ended up getting killed in a flash. Meanwhile, Iruna is seen getting scared and starts looking for her parents' presence. As the memories of her past start coming back, Iruna starts to cry once more. But after she remembers what her mother said, for her to stay alive, a glimpse of hope can be seen back in her eyes. Back to Yuki as he steps outside the mansion, a group of men await him. With a wide smirk on his face, he is amazed at the grand welcome. Iruna, who is at the side of the mansion, hiding, hugs herself out of fear. But all that she could think about was that she wanted to hug She again, play games with Luffy, and have naps with Rear. She also badly wants to talk with Yuki once more. All she wants is not to be alone again anymore. As the tears start to flow, when Yuki screams in anger, Iduna knows where to run now. She then rushes off the little alleyway to Yuki's arms. When she finally reaches him, Yuki tightly hugs her, assuring her that she will now be alright. But before they celebrate, Yuki tells her that this place is dangerous and that she should get out of the town with Rear first. Iduna then finds the time to tell Yuki that there are others who have been abducted just like she was, and she wants Yuki to save them all as well. With an assuring look on his face, Yuki tells Iduna that she should leave it up to him. That said, Rear then rushes out of town while Yuki is now in deep rage as he declares he will kill every human who has wronged Iduna no matter what. In the first scene of this episode, Yuki shouts that he will kill every human he sees roaming around. Now that the Demon Lord is already burning in anger, he doesn't care about it anymore and will make sure that the race should go extinct. As he took one step forward, everyone around him froze still. But before he can even land a hit at any of the humans, Luffy steps into the scene. She reminds Yuki to stay calm as they have already fulfilled their objective, considering that Yuki has already taken his revenge against the one that did wrong things to Iruna. So Luffy asks Yuki to go home with her since they have nothing to do in the city anymore. Aside from that, Luffy is extremely hungry, so she starts to demand a feast from Yuki for all her hard work. Although speechless for a little while, Yuki then abruptly smiles. He then promises Luffy that he will give her something special when they return. This made Luffy so excited about the treatment she was about to get. Luffy warns Yuki that what he gives should be special, or she won't forgive him. Yuki then states that once Luffy eats the food he will give later, she won't be satisfied by eating normal snacks for a while now. Hearing this made Luffy gulp in excitement. She guesses she has to be careful with it after all. The brief conversation is interrupted when Lelo Lalubia, the town's lord, enters. Lelo says his apologies for causing trouble to Yuki and his family. And on behalf of the people, Lelo bows his head to show respect to the Demon King. He then invites Yuki and Luffy to his mansion to talk about something. He promised that it wouldn't take that long at all. Once they got inside the mansion, Lelo again apologized for what happened that day. He promises to improve his supervision so something like this doesn't happen again. Then Luffy realizes that Lelo may not have realized her identity since she is in a treaty with the humans. Yuki then realizes that Lelo might have an appraisal skill and probably realized that Luffy is the supreme dragon. On the other hand, after Yuki learned about the treaty, he got curious about it. Luffy then explains that a long time ago, in an era where everyone wanted to prove their strength, many brainless people came to challenge her. 
Since things like this happened to her every day, it came to the point that she eventually thought of destroying the whole kingdom altogether. But then the king came and brought her a proposal to not disturb each other. That means that the treaty should still be active till now. So Luffy scolds the lord, saying that Iruna, the girl they have kidnapped, is her own family. They have done the worst things to her, so they must have prepared for the worst coming to them as well, and pay for what they have done. Lilo then begs for Luffy's forgiveness and states they are willing to keep the treaty. He promises to do his best to accept all the conditions. Luffy then gives the floor to Yuki, stating that he should decide for the team. Yuki then states that he doesn't care what the people are doing, but if something bad like this happens again, he will not think twice about killing them. Lelo then promises to make sure no one enters the haunted forest anymore. Other than that, Yuki also asks the Lord to bring him every slave in the mansion since he will bring them with him as well. Once Luffy and Yuki leave, the Lord sighs in relief as he wishes that they'll never meet the two ever again. But it seems like Yuki and Luffy's request that people not enter the haunted forest would be a little impossible, considering that lately, at the kingdom, there is a faction that is saying everyone should go to the haunted forest since it is rich in natural resources. And knowing that the kingdom might use the event as an excuse to send an army to the forest frightens Lelo. That's why he aims to stop them from initiating havoc at any cost. On the other hand, Yuki is now in a dilemma about what he would do with the female slaves they were able to rescue. When asked if they have a home, it seems like most of them have somewhere to go. Luffy then asks her dragons to take the slaves back to their homes, while those others who have nowhere to go can stay with them. Two slaves are left remaining, named Layla and Elunin. Layla is of Sheephorn race, and Elunin Grail is of Warwolf race. Two of them are willing to serve the Demon Lord and return their favor. When Elunin sees Rear, she's in deep astonishment as Rear is like a god for the Warwolves. As a result, she begs Yuki to let her stay even if she has to do the chores. Elunin wants to serve Rear so that she can boast about it when she comes back to her village. With that said, they all introduce themselves one by one. When they were about to enter, Yuki said his thanks to Luffy for helping him through the whole rescue. Luffy then says her thoughts about Yuki coloring her life. Since the day she met him, her monochrome life turned into something colorful each and every single day, so she hopes that he'll continue to do so in the coming days. When Iruna meets the two, she is thankful that Yuki has saved them, but at the same time, sad at the fact that Yuki has now got new concubines, as she would call them. Such a statement made Yuki caught off guard, and he knew all too well who said such things to Iruna, and it was none other than Luffy herself. Layla and Eluin then enter the room, wearing their cute maid dresses. When Yuki realizes that Layla is of demonkin descent, he decides to ask her what is a demon lord's position from the perspective of a demonkin. Layla then honestly states that they are just a being that is modified by the dungeon to fit it. For example, if there's a dungeon that wants to have a goblin as the demon lord, the goblin will be given power strong enough not to be categorized as a normal goblin anymore. That said, Yuki has now gained new knowledge about his role in the new world. While the girls are inside busy trying things out on their own, Yuki goes out to perform another mission, and that is adding a flatland area to the dungeon. Using his demon wings, he surveys the area from above. As he looks around the field, he realizes that it is quite spacious with a 1 km height and 5 km width. With this much space, Yuki decides to add rivers and mountains, as well as a bridge and sakura trees. To top it all off, he even decided to add a Japanese style inn where he could relax all day long. While he is enjoying a hot bath, Iruna enters the room, asking Yuki to wash his hair. Yuki then tells Iruna about his plans to have a picnic with everyone in the flatland, but it seems like Iruna has no idea what a picnic is. Yuki then finds the time to explain everything to her. Then after a while, Yuki gasps in shock when Leffy enters the inn all naked. It seems like she also wants Yuki to wash her hair as well. During their washing session, it seemed like Yuki couldn't control his breathing as Leffy's naked body touched him. When Leffy takes notice of it, Yuki immediately shuts her off, saying such a childish body does not arouse him. Iruna then stops the two from bickering and they all go inside the hot bath. There, Yuki asks Luffy if she knows the requirements for getting a title. Usually, one receives a title after doing something great. Other than that, one might receive a title if they have some thought of defying the law of nature. However, there are also some stupid people out there who think that God bestows us with them after observing what we have done. Either way, no one really knows how to receive one. It is just something that's there before anyone realizes it. This is when Yuki realizes that there is no God in the new world he's in. But there is one that is called a judge, which is the person who hates sin and crime and will bring judgment to guilty people. As Yuki checks on his status panel, he notices that he is able to get a weird title recently, and it seems like it's really useful. This made him wonder if Luffy, the known supreme dragon, also had other titles as well. With a cocky look on her face, Luffy said yes, but she just keeps it to herself since the title of the supreme dragon, as it is, is already enough. Yuki is also able to notice that he can't somehow see any of Luffy or Iduna's skills, which means they have the same skill of concealing their powers. During this time as well, Yuki is able to realize that he is technically an immortal when Luffy tells him that as a demonkin, he has a very long lifespan. Although at first, Yuki is a bit terrified of the idea that he will be alone after everyone dies, he's relieved when Luffy tells him that she, as a dragonkin, also has a very long lifespan. While they are so immersed in their conversation, Iduna is slowly dozing off. As Yuki tries to take care of her, it seems like Luffy has finally found out what title Yuki is able to get. And let's just say it literally shattered her pride. Yuki just got the title of Supreme Dragon Master, 
and this annoyed the hell out of Luffy. When night falls, Layla and Eluin are seen getting ready for bed. It is then revealed that Layla is actually from a tribe of researchers, and she didn't just decide to pay back Yuki for his kindness, but she also plans to do some research about dungeons and demon lords. Other than that, Eluin is no ordinary wolf race as well. It turns out that she is actually the daughter of the wolf chief. The two didn't want anyone to know their identity, especially Yuki. That's why they made a deal to keep their mouths shut and just keep everything a secret. With that said, since they will have yet another long day the next, they bid each other a good night's sleep. The next day, just as Yuki planned, they all went to have a picnic. Although Luffy didn't want to come, she still ended up getting dragged to the place. Yuki stated to everyone that they would have a good time and play all day. They were all confused since there was no place in the said area that could be utilized for recreational activity. But Yuki assures them that they will surely enjoy it since he has already planned everything. For their first activity, Yuki arranged a sled ride which Yuduna rode first. The maids then followed and they all loved it so much. But it seems like Luffy has no plans of joining the fun, so Yuki decided to drag her into it. She ended up getting dizzy as they slid the sled up the hill. In the end, Luffy then did her payback as she dragged Yuki up above the sky. But it seems like it didn't really affect Yuki as much as she thought it would. Though Yuki did get scared for a bit, he was still able to stay composed. After a long day of play, they decided to eat some lunch with the bentos that Layla and Eluin had prepared. However, Luffy wouldn't be satisfied eating just it, so Yuki tells her that she has no need to worry since he'll make sure to give her some dessert after the meal. At the same time, Eluin for the first time has finally noticed that Luffy is the supreme dragon. All this time, she thought Luffy was just a mere someone that Yuki was able to save. As they enjoy their day outside the forest at the Elisha Kingdom, the king and the prince are having an argument. It seems like Prince Duto Gloria wants to take revenge on Yuki and attack the haunted forest. He didn't want the dignity of the kingdom to fall just because of some demon lord. The king tries to stop him, saying that the problem might get even bigger if they did so. No matter how the king tries to stop the prince, it seems like he really decided to kill Yuki no matter what. As a result, the prince ended up ordering a number of soldiers to attack the said haunted forest. As they launched their attacks, Yuki together with Luffy noticed the incoming intruders. As Yuki checks on them, it seems like their equipment is mediocre, but they look like some country soldiers and are about 400 to 500 in number. Knowing this made Luffy irritated at the fact that these humans didn't learn from their mistakes. She then asks Yuki if she should go and finish them all up. However, Yuki stops her and states that he wants to try something, but if it doesn't go well, she can jump right in to help him. Before the fight, Yuki states to at least try to warn them first. That said, he then goes off while Luffy is left at the house awaiting his return. As Yuki arrives at the said place, he quickly notices that the intruders are also using the same artifacts that weaken monsters like last time, but it doesn't really matter considering it doesn't affect him at all. Without any second thought, Yuki enters one of the tents. As one of the soldiers see him, the soldier quickly froze and stayed still. Yuki then confidently asks him if he is the leader of the organization, but it seems like Yuki gets embarrassed as the guy sees that he is not. Despite that, Yuki tells him to pass the message to their leader. Yuki reminds them that the area they are in right now is his turf, and if they even plan to keep on staying, he will have no second thoughts about killing them all. But it seems like the soldier is confused at the fact that Yuki warned them first, where in fact, he can easily massacre them in one go if he wants to. Yuki then explained that he just didn't want to kill all pests coming his way since it was such a pain in the ass. And just like that, it seems like Yuki's plan did go pretty smoothly, as some of the intruders left immediately after they got the message. But it seems like others are not easily persuaded. Knowing this made Luffy irritated, considering Yuki just decided to come back so nonchalantly. As Luffy pouts in dismay, Yuki says his apologies and states he will show her something interesting. Yuki reveals that he wanted to test the traps he had put around the dungeon on the soldiers who decided to stay. The evil eye is one of them. This trap is a golem type dungeon monster that can send information about what it sees as a video. It uses the mana inside the dungeon to move. Other than that, Yuki also decided to add Rosh Gift Bomb, which is a known hallucination tree. It spreads mana that has the effect of showing hallucinations to loving beings around it. That said, all the soldiers are now killing themselves one by one, seeing each other as enemies. But it seems like Luffy thinks that these traps will hardly be able to annihilate all of them. Yuki, being the prepared person that he is, made sure that he had a plan B. It seems like he has also put other traps like acid swamps and threads everywhere. After a few hours, the whole bloody scene finally ended, but it seems like Luffy hasn't had enough. A few days later, the soldier that Yuki had talked to, who had retreated, reports to the capital what had happened in the forest. However, instead of listening to him, he got fired instead. He's so frustrated at the fact that the prince can do such a thing. In a tavern, he poured his frustration at the fact that the prince got so blinded by his own greed and sent troops to a place where monsters like that live. On the other hand, all of his emotions were heard by the Lord Lelo. As a lord who governs land near the infamous haunted forest, he would like to hire a talented soldier who just lost his job. Lelo then asked the poor soldier if he would like to accept his offer. And just like that, the plan to entwine these emotions has started. On the other hand, Yuki and the others are seen having a good time strolling around the forest. It seems like Yuki has been captivated by Luffy's beauty that when he gets caught, he just reasons out that that is the only good thing Luffy has. As they stroll deep into the forest, 
They were able to discover a thousand-year-old tree as well as a monster plant that eats meat. As the day went on, they were also able to play with Rear and even rest in a beautiful peaceful lake. Although at first, Luffy is very hesitant to play with Rear and Iduna, in the end she decided to play with everyone sometime again. The next day, as Iduna wakes them up, it seems like Yuki has gone through a race revolution. It is when someone reaches a certain level. They will evolve into the superior version of the race. This mainly occurs in races other than humans. It seems like Yuki killing many humans using his trap has changed him. Layla, who is doing research on the dungeons and demon lords, seems so fascinated with Yuki's changes that even Yuki gets a little bit uncomfortable with her piercing stares. After breakfast, Yuki is able to notice that along with his race's evolution, the list of the dungeon items has also been updated. Other than that, Luffy is also able to notice that even Yuki's mana quality has also changed. With that said, Yuki is now grown curious if Luffy has ever experienced a race evolution. It turns out that she didn't since ancient dragons are already the strongest as is. But Yuki thinks that after Luffy reaches level 1000, she might still undergo one. Luffy has also noticed that Yuki's appearance didn't change at all compared to others who have gone through race evolution. But after Yuki checks on his wings, Luffy is left mesmerized by its changes. Luffy really wanted to touch his wings, but it seemed like Yuki didn't want to. So Luffy suggests that he could also touch hers if he lets her touch his. In the end, after they start touching each other's wings, they're caught up in a flustering situation. As a result, Yuki moves away as he might get addicted to touching it if he continues. For now, he will just focus on checking his new updates. He has now gained a skill called Building Facilities, which he can use to build his Demon Lord's castle. As he checks it, it is actually quite costly, but if he compares it to buying a castle from the catalog, then it's a lot cheaper. Now the problem lies in how much it will cost magic power and his imagination, but he strongly believes that with practice, he'll get there sooner or later, but it turned out harder than he thought. Although he somehow succeeded a bit, it was still not enough. So when Layla told him that he could increase his magic power, he asked Luffy for help. Luffy then tells him that she can lend him her magic powers if she wants to, but Luffy also states another way he can try to expand his power. It is simply by emptying his magic power, and when you already empty his magic power, his capacity will increase by a little when it regenerates. He can do so by using his water magic to train his magic power control. But a few days later, after Luffy wakes up from a long sleep, she is in shock when she sees Yuki in his new form. But thankfully, he is able to come back to his true form after he finishes imagining the image of the castle he has always wanted. Since Luffy had now woken up from her long nap, Yuki ended up taking her with him to the step area to show her some of the miniatures he had been able to make in the past few days. Knowing that Yuki has been doing this since he wants to build his own castle, Luffy suggested that he should just ask Layla for advice since it is known that her knowledge in building and arts is wider than hers. Yuki did mention that he had asked for Layla's advice, but she just ended up looking at his magic instead of helping him. But it seems like Yuki's skills have been improving in the past few days as Luffy would see it. All things considered, his miniatures look amazing, just like the ones Luffy had seen for herself. But Yuki has also made some weird looking miniatures like the super transforming and docking Mofudir MK2. But although it says docking and transforming, the miniature doesn't do any of it. The way that Yuki says it towards Luffy is so irritating that she eventually decides to blow it to pieces. Even Yuki is shocked at what Luffy did. Yuki is so devastated at what was happening to his masterpiece that he starts to weep in agony. Luffy comforted him saying he would still be able to make something better right away. And just like that, Yuki's eyes sparkled once more, saying that he was indeed the most creative demon lord there was. To even boost his ego, Luffy further asks him to show her the blueprint of the castle he wants to make, as she badly wants to go back to sleep already. Yuki, who is now happy once more, confidently shows his next masterpiece called the super transforming and docking Lefishtus MK2. This masterpiece is solely made to irritate Luffy, and to make it even worse, Yuki added some irritable remarks, saying that if he adds dark and vicious fangs, it will become a Lefishtus super mad version. Luffy, on the other hand, continues to blow up each of the statues that Yuki makes one after another. They continued bickering for minutes until they eventually got tired. A few days later, Yuki's preparation was complete. He takes everyone somewhere to show them his magnificent masterpiece. Iduna wonders where they are going, and Yuki simply states that they are going to spectate him, pulling off the ambition and dream of all men. Yuki is so confident that he will be able to pull it off well this time around, however, as he pushed the button, his magic drained faster than he thought. That's why he has to keep his image of the castle intact. But thankfully, thanks to Luffy's help, he's able to pull it off really well. Layla and Eluin are so shocked and amazed at the same time by the paramount magic Yuki and Luffy have. Yuki seems to get teary-eyed as soon as he sees his dream has now come to reality. The castle built is beyond anyone's expectations. Other than Yuki, everyone is also seen happily excited about the new place, especially Iduna. However, due to its enormous size, it seems like they won't be able to live in it at all since it's so hard to get around. The corridors are so long and there are so many rooms, but it is still useful to scare the infiltrators who dare to set foot in the haunted forest. As Yuki drowns in his thoughts, Luffy hops on his lap trying to cheer him up. It seems like Luffy is not used to seeing Yuki getting all sulky. So to brighten up his mood, Luffy is willing to pamper him. Yuki did assure her that it was okay, since he will always be there to laugh it off when Luffy does something absurd. But despite it all, Yuki is indeed thankful for Luffy's effort. 
Meanwhile, in the Alicia Kingdom castle, the prince is so furious at the fact that the soldiers he sent failed their mission. He starts to contemplate if they would need a bigger army than before if they want to win. But he also thought that if they moved more soldiers than they were doing now, the king would eventually realize what they had been doing. The prince is quite aware of that fact and he knows that he can't cover up for the nobles because of the mission's failure. It seems like he is aware that the nobles' trust in him has already dropped to the bottom. That's why the prince thought that the only way for them to succeed was through the help of the heroes from the church. He plans to bribe the church with a lot of money to make them go for the mission. That said, a hero named Nell has been subjected to enter Yuki's territory. Now it's a matter of time before we know what awaits of the girl who is inside a forest full of anxiety. Yuki is able to detect Nell's presence right away. He somehow can't believe that heroes do really exist in worlds like this. As a precaution, he tells everyone to go to the safe chamber in case Nell is surprisingly strong. But it seems like Yuki already knows that he will win either way. Luffy asks him if he needs her help, but Yuki quickly turns her down, saying that he has got it all under control. As Nell got closer to the dungeon, she was quite speechless when she saw the gigantic castle for the first time. Yuki, on the other hand, looks very happy and giggly as he sees that his castle frightens the so-called strong hero. But it doesn't stop there. Yuki has so much up his sleeve and he can't wait to see how Nell will react to his traps. Nell then enters the castle no matter how scared she is. As she walks down the halls, she starts to get scared as empty armor starts moving even though she doesn't feel any presence at all. She tries to keep her composure, but as she took another step, it seemed like the ghosts kept on following her. When one of the traps Yuki made suddenly pops out of nowhere, Nell jumps out of fear. Yuki on the other hand is laughing his ass off. Yuki then reveals that the ones behind the castle traps are called Wraiths, which is a type of monster inside the dungeon that is composed of three spirits. Those three spirits are Ro, whose specialty is spirit magic, then there is Rei, who's good at psychokinesis, and lastly, Rui, who specializes in illusion magic. Yuki made sure that Nell won't be able to detect those three girls. This means that the dungeon's defense system, Haunted Mansion Mode, is a great success. Yuki even thought of adding more defense systems such as Totally Killing Mode and Destroy Mode. But before he drowns in his fantasies, Iduna and Lefi tell him to stop playing games with Nell, who is seen crying her eyes out due to fear. Although it would spoil his fun, Yuki eventually decided to do as the girls wanted. As he gets where Nell is, he tries to explain that the things people know about him are not true. Since all this time, Nell solely believed that Yuki is a bad guy who kills innocent people. Yuki then explains to her that he is not and that he only kills those who want to harm him and his family. His statement somehow made Nell shocked. Nell then asks him if he will also kill her, considering she is there to bring harm to him. Yuki then states that he will never kill a girl or more like a brat like her. When Yuki is about to leave, Nell then stops him and asks for his help. It seems like out of fear, Nell couldn't even move her knees. With that said, Yuki even offered her to have a bath in the inn. There, Nell starts to contemplate why she came to the castle for. Nell can't seem to grasp that the demon lord everyone is scared of is actually strangely kind-hearted. During her contemplation, Iduna also enters the bath to join her. Starting a conversation, Nell even grows fascinated to know more about Yuki, considering Iduna has nothing to say about him but good things. But it seems like Nell is unsure if she should believe the rumors about Yuki being attracted to young girls like Iduna. After their brief refreshing bath, Nell accidentally heard Yuki and Luffy's conversation. It seems like Luffy is frustrated at the fact that Yuki has added a new addition to the number of girls in the castle. Yuki tries to explain that he had no bad intentions with Nell. All that he wanted was to help her since she had no place to stay, and it was already night. Then Layla and Eluin enter the room, saying their thanks to Nell for taking good care of Iduna while they were in the bath. Yuki is about to help Nell prepare everything she needs for the night to show his hospitality, but Luffy quickly stops her saying that Layla and Eluin could handle it themselves. The next day, Yuki and Nell finally have a private conversation in which Yuki asks for Nell's insight regarding who has ordered her to come to the castle. Nell then states that it was the church and not the Alicia Kingdom itself. This made Yuki wonder who was really behind all these attacks. He has an idea that it would be someone affiliated with the kingdom and has great power too, but for now he will just try to get as much information as he can on his own. During this time, Nell has also found the time to ask Yuki if the rumors about him having a fetish for little girls are true. This shocked the hell out of Yuki. Yuki then explains that he couldn't do such a thing, especially to someone like Iruna, whom he sees as his little sister. But it seems like it is quite apparent that he is somewhat in a deeper relationship with Luffy. However, he can't tell much about it this time around. With that said, their brief conversation comes to an end. But Yuki has something to ask Nell for. Although at first Nell is hesitant about it, she eventually gives in and lets Yuki, together with Luffy, come with her to the town. The moment they got there, the happiness and excitement on Yuki's face was indescribable. Thankfully, Nell as a hero is able to enter the town without any questions asked, and because of that, she's able to let Yuki and Luffy join her without attracting much attention. As they got inside, Yuki was so excited that he wanted to visit every corner of the said town. A small gathering is then seen happening at the center of the town. Since Luffy couldn't view it properly, Yuki decided to let her ride on his shoulders. They then start bickering once more, but this time it was more intimate and much more flustering. Even Nell couldn't deny the fact that the two were indeed really close to each other. 
After the said viewing, Nell is planning to take the two into a guild, so it's better if they both quickly get their IDs first. That said, even a hero like her has no choice but to let out a dry laugh after watching the Demon Lord and Supreme Dragon in tandem. It seems like Yuki is looking forward to visiting the Adventurer's Guild, but it seems like he has no idea that adventurers also kill monsters and other races. Even after knowing such information, Yuki still had the ability to smile happily. But it seems like other than that, adventurers also work as bodyguards or gather precious herbs. As Luffy remembers that a bunch of adventurers have assaulted her in the past, she somehow plans to eradicate them all. But Nell quickly asks her not to do so since it would create such a big scene. When they finally reach the Adventurer's Guild, Nell immediately asks the front desk to register Luffy and Yuki as adventurers. However, it seems like the front desk couldn't believe that a young looking lady like Luffy was planning to enter such an industry. Before they attract any more attention, Nell immediately informs the front desk that she can guarantee Yuki and Luffy's identity. And just like that, they were given forms to fill out. In the said forms, they needed to write their names in class. But, knowing that Yugi and Luffy's class will create a war, they decide to act like a fool and ask the front desk what class is. The lady then states that the class describes the role one has in a battle, so Yugi and Luffy can simply fill them with what they think fits their style. One can look up their class by using the Analyze skill or the Appraisal crystal in the guild, but the non-combatant classes will also show up. But of course, they can't possibly use such magic tools considering they will get caught. So Yugi decided to disguise his status just like Luffy does, so he asks Luffy what class she thinks he is in. Luffy then states that Yugi looks like a luggage carrier. But Nell cuts their conversation, saying that the luggage carrier is a non-combatant class. Nell then decided that she should just pick a class for the two. Yuki is a swordsman and Luffy is a magician. Now that the second part of the form is filled, they will now have to enumerate the skills they are most proficient with. As Nell asks what skills they have, she is just in shock as the two keep on muttering skills that don't fit in with their class. But for some reason, they were still able to register themselves and can now officially enter a town anytime they like. As compensation, Yuki also gives Nell some monster material she could sell so that she'll have the money she has spent throughout the short trip. Yuki also got curious about the pattern engraved in the IDs, which Nell immediately explained. It is said that the pattern engraved is a ripple of the holder's magic, which people call a magic crest. And since every single person has a different pattern, it is now used to identify people. The card also shines bright and only the rightful owner can make it so. That's why nobody can pretend to be one even if they have other people's IDs. Yuki then wonders what about those people who have no magic. This made Nell confused since there's no such thing as people who have no magic power. Although it is true that there are some people who have trouble circulating their magic, there's no such thing as someone who has none at all. Moreover, for additional info, the ripple also shows which element the user has the best affinity with. In this case, Luffy is fire, but since fire has low versatility, Luffy hasn't shown it to Yuki yet. She added that she only uses it for burning things. Although she seems so embarrassed about it, Yuki still sees it as an amazing thing. For sure, her fire has an amazing warmth to it, Yuki states. This made Luffy flustered. This even made her giggle a little and hold Yuki's shirt tight. And just like that, their seemingly peaceful stroll turned a little bit grey when a group of men with sharp objects stopped them from moving any further. It seems like they thought they were up against weaklings. Little did they know that they're literally asking for a fight with two of the strongest races in the world. But as a turn of events, the group's leader somehow knew that Yuki was a demon. In exchange for keeping quiet, he asked for Yuki's money and Luffy's. However, Yuki wouldn't allow such things to happen. So as a result, Yuki rushes towards the bad guy, all furious. He grabs him by the neck while saying the words that no one can ever talk about about his woman. The statement somehow made Luffy flustered very much, to the point that she almost passed out. That said, Yuki and Nell did all the work and defeated most of the wannabe strong guys gang. But it seems like in every group, there will always be that one that is hard to defeat. One of the bad guys managed to fight against Yuki, all due to his powerful blade. Even Nell is amazed at the enemy's weapon, but it is no match with Yuki's fortress destroyer blade. It's a pitch black sword made by Yuki himself. It's extraordinarily heavy and any normal person can't possibly lift it. That said, as Yuki swings his sword, the enemy does the same. Although the enemy is extremely strong in many aspects, in the end, Yuki is still the one that has won the fight. The enemy can't believe that a guy like Yuki is able to defeat him that easily. Yuki then explains to him that it's simply because he didn't run even though he is a weakling. As the enemy falls to the ground, the fight has now finally reached its end. As Yuki walks towards the enemy's blade, Yuki tells Luffy that if he were to go berserk, he would beg her to stop him even if he has to cut his arms. Luffy then nods immediately, saying she'll definitely do it. Nell tries to stop Yuki from touching the blade since the negative emotions in it might overtake his body. But it seems like Yuki has already decided as he wraps his palms and carries the blade with his hands. As the negativity starts to cover the whole surroundings, Yuki fights it off by stating that they will now be under him. When the weapon starts to cool down, Yuki already has a lot of things in mind as to what he will do with it. Nell then asks Yuki after the said dark scene if he feels strange or something. He then assures her that he is all good and well, and even Luffy doesn't sense that Yuki is being cursed or anything of the like. Then, Luffy even had the time to tease Yuki about what he said earlier about her being his woman. He then says he's sorry and tries to explain that he said all that because he was just caught up in the moment. 
As Yuki mumbles so many words, Luffy comes closer to him and states that he doesn't need to apologize. This freezes Yuki for a bit, and as he looks into Luffy's eyes, the happiness in her is undeniable. Seeing her look that happy made Yuki fluster to the point that he couldn't even talk. Thankfully, Nell steps right in to ease the tension, and as they walk away from the scene, Luffy is seen still looking forward to eating some skewered meat. However, as they were on their way to the shops, another group of men with weapons stop them. It seems like it's one problem after another. As fate has it, the soldier is the same soldier that Yuki has talked with in the haunted forest before. When he explains his side and his plans on seeing the governor, the soldier manages to help him have an audience with the lord. Laylor then asks Yuki if he visited the town to exact revenge on everyone, but Yuki immediately shuts him off, saying that he doesn't and all he wants is to know who is behind all the attacks behind him. However, it seems like the Lord has no plans to tell him anything at all, so he just decided to leave. Nell, who introduced herself as the hero, stayed with the Lord to talk about it more. It seems like the Landlord has a bit of trust in Nell, so he eventually states that the one who is behind this attack is the Prince, not the King. It seems like the Prince is caught up in the idea that the Haunted Forest will make the Kingdom rich, even if it will cost some innocent lives. Little did the Lord know that Yuki had put some evil ears to eavesdrop on their conversation. That said, Yuki ended up still knowing that it was actually the Prince all along. Now the problem is, he can't simply kill the prince easily since it will create war, and he didn't want to drag Luffy and the others into it. So instead of saying his plans to Luffy, he decided to keep it to himself and just find a resolution silently, all with the aim of protecting the girls' peaceful lives. That's all we have for today. Don't forget to subscribe so you'll be notified if we upload part 5 of the series. Until next time, bye!